Scott Schiller from Team G503 and Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts. I'm going to show you in this video how to adjust the 9 inch stock brakes on a G503 Willis MB. A lot of folks out there, I hear it all the time. I need an upgrade, I need an upgrade. And you know, you can go from the 9 inch to the 11 inch, but in reality, the 9 inch brakes will work fantastically if they're adjusted properly and all your components are in working order. So I'm going to show you in this video how to adjust it. Now we're not going to bleed the brakes in this or we're not going to adjust the actual lever that goes into the master cylinder from the brake pedal. But just to get a good idea, I'm going to use some feeler gauges, some tools. It's not hard. I promise you can do it. I, I promise you'll be ecstatic with the results. It'll stop on a dime. I've got the basic tools out that you'll need to adjust the brakes. And I'll be doing the uh, major brake adjustment according to the manual, and that's the TM9. Uh, you'll need a flashlight, and that's just going to be for your own convenience. I'll show you why later. You'll need a set of feeler gauges with a 8 thousandths and 5 thousandths uh, spoon or tongue on there. I just use a regular 9 16 inch wrench. Uh, you can use an offset. That might be a little handy, but you can uh, pretty much get at the top eccentrics with a 9 16 inch rail wrench. You will need, or this will come in very handy, You'll need one of these specialty wrenches. It's a quarter inch and it's a uh, 5 16 I'm sorry, 3 16 on the other side. This is by Mac Tools. I believe Snap-on makes these. These are available on the web. Uh, you'll really like that when you are adjusting the brakes it's, and it's a super nice tool to have. And you'll see why later in the video. This is a wrench that I made a while back when I was doing the CJ2A. And basically what, what you do is you take a three quarter inch wrench, you heat up the area here, and you heat up the area here and you bend that. And then the real trick also is you have to grind the one side so you've got a thinner distance here. And you'll see why later in the video that is important also. They do make wrenches specialty for that, but you can make one of your own. And uh, that's just out of a three quarter inch Craftsman wrench that I've had for a long, long time. And it'll, it works really well. The manual, here I've got it open. And if you don't have a manual, these will really help you. Uh, they help me quite a bit. You go back in and you can, you can see visuals and you can read exactly uh, the instructions on how, what you're doing. They've got listed in here a brake service adjustment, and then they've got what they call a major and a minor. And the minor is kind of interesting, and I'll show you, that, here I keep saying I'll show you in the video, but Joel, this will all make sense to you. I just want to get this out in the front of the video. This is a method that basically you're just rotating the wheel, making the top and bottom of the, of the liner, the pad, touch the drum, and then backing off on it a little bit so it doesn't drag, which is going to be interesting. And then we got a major adjustment, which I'll be showing you in the video also, where you're actually going to use the feeler gauges uh, with the wheels off the vehicle. But it's all listed out there in the manual, and you've got your part numbers and every, every individual part listed. If you don't have one of these manuals, pick one up. Uh, they're, they're out there getting reproduced, and this one is uh, bound, and it's got plastic on it. You, know, you can use this in the garage and not worry that you've got this vintage you know, manual that you don't want to get grease all over. So that's a very usable item. Check those out. They're available all over eBay. All right, let's get into the brakes. Ah, I almost forgot. Vice grips. I will not be using vice grips on these eccentrics because a lot of times folks, will, they don't have that proper wrench and they'll use these. And you know, it's all well and good. Vice grips are a wonderful thing for their application, but don't use those on the eccentrics. All you're gonna do is wind up rounding off the, the corners and the tops and you'll wind up ruining them. So we're not using this. That's why I had it out there, laid out there. I just wanted to show you that. I am still in chassis stage with the 1943 Willis MB Team G 503 project. And what I've done is I've simply just jacked the rear end off the floor and set the vehicle on jack stand safely. I put little pieces of rag between there just because it's freshly painted. I don't want to scuff it all up. So I've got both sides supported and I've removed the wheels and I've just got them up here against the frame of the Jeep. We'll do the backs first and then we'll go to the front. Get in here and take a look at the outside of the drum. Now these drums, uh, in a previous video that I did, I had these turned professionally and, and that's a good place to start. Either uh, you have new ones or not, make sure you've got a nice new surface in there and make sure that you're within spec of the thickness of how thin that drum can be turned. The only thing I wanna show you out here is this slot that's on the outside of the drum and that's where we're gonna insert our feeler gauge to check the clearances between the linings inside. On the back side of the backer plate, you can see up top that's your bleeder screw and then where your cylinder is mounted. And then you've got your upper eccentrics with the nuts and the lock washers. And then below, you have your anchor pins that are on the bottom with the lock washers and nuts. And those will be what we're using to adjust 
the brake pads on the inside of the drums. Okay, so let's get started here. What you want to do is you want to have all your hardware loosened up. So if this was already installed on your Jeep and it had already been adjusted one time, you would just crack open these nuts just so you could get uh, the, the parts to move. You don't want to take these out too far. It'll help you back when you're trying to tighten them back up. I've got everything installed and the drum turns freely, as you can see. And I'm going to start with the top front eccentric. And I'm going to, there's my specialty wrench. I'm going to put that on the stud there on the eccentric. And I'm going to turn that upwards or towards the rim until it drags on my drum right there. I'll turn the camera around on the other side and I'll show you where we're going to use the feeler gauge through the slot on the outside of the drum. This is going to be hard to film, but remember the flashlight. If you take the flashlight and you shine it right inside that slot, and if you have good eyes, you can almost see where the pad on the inside starts with the liner. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our eighth thousandths point zero zero eight feeler gauge and we're going to slide in here the manual says to check this at about an inch and i've got it's a little little tight so all i need to do is move my eccentric with my wrench i hope you can see it in their background until i get a good feel on that and i'm still going to check it to see That seems pretty good. Now, if I turned up on that just a little bit, that would that would snug up on that wheel again. Here again, on the top front, the feeler gauge just drags between the drum and the liner. And that would be checked out at 0 .008 thousandths of an inch. And we'll tighten it up from the back. We're going to hold the eccentric with our special wrench. And then we're going to tighten up the nut. You want to hold that right in place because, again, you're only moving that eight thousandths of an inch and you snug it back up. So you want to make sure that that eccentric pin does not move. Get that nice and tight. And we'll check it. Seems to be okay. And I'll go back with the feeler gauge in the front and double check that before I move on to the next one. On the back side of the drum facing the rear now, I've got my wrench back on the eccentric. And I'm going to rotate the drum and just turn that a little bit towards the front of the Jeep at a time until I get some drag. Starting right there. I'm not turning the wrench very hardly. Right there we got some drag. Now remember, on the back side of these drums, the pad is shorter than the front one. So again, we can take our flashlight and we can look inside there. And you can, it's difficult to see, but you can see where that pad is. And then we'll take our eight thousandths feeler gauge, about an inch in from the front side. Be right about there. And we're still tight, so loosen that up just a little bit. And get the feeler gauge in there. And once you get the feeler gauge tight, you can adjust just a little bit at a time until you get that 8 thousandths. And again, there should be a little bit of drag on there. And that feels good there, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the back nut on the eccentric. On the anchor pins, the adjustment width is a little bit different. It's 0 .005, so 5 thousandths of an inch. And we can get our feeler gauge in there, and we can actually drag down here to the bottom. And I'll show you the anchor pin locations on the back. There's dimples that according to the manual, need to face each other. So we'll face those towards each other and then we'll, I'll show you how to make the adjustment from the back. On the back side of the brake plate here, you can see the two dimples are facing each other. And then I'll, again, I've got these nuts, they're just broken loose so I'll be able to turn these and able to adjust them. But you don't want too much slack in this nut because you'll be turning on it forever after you get these adjusted to the way you want them. And I'll show you why in a minute here with that special wrench that I made in the beginning of the video. Okay, so I can turn the brake drum freely here. And I'm going to bring up on this. And there we have, there's our drag right there. You can hear it. And then I'm going to, from the front side, I'm going to put that feeler gauge in that slot. And I'm going to adjust it back to five thousandths. You can't see me up here in the front, but 
We're doing the same thing we did at the top two. Just gonna back off a little bit, check on my feeler gauge. And that feels about right. Let's see if it spins freely. Feels like we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up now. Now this is the fun part, the special wrench. It's easiest to come in the back side here and get on that nut. Hold that pin with your wrench, and I only have to give it half a turn there, and it's gonna tighten down. And you wanna get these pretty snug. And then we'll check that with the feeler gauge one more time from the front. And that feels about right. So we're gonna to move to the back side lower and adjust that there. We'll shoot this side, the uh, rear side of the anchor pin from the outside so you can see exactly where I'm going with that slot and the feeler gauge. Basically, I've got line up there. Use the flashlight again so I can see the end. Remember, these pads are shorter here and you wanna be about an inch in on the pad from what the manual says. And you're gonna take your wrench, just a good place to start. And remember now, turn the dimples are facing each other on the inside. So I'm gonna spin the drum. Turning up with the wrench. And there I get my drag right there. Spin that around to check it with the fuel gauge. I know it's gonna be tight. Just a little tight though. Right there. And actually, I got lucky on that one. That's about right. It's just a little tight. So we'll make the adjustment on that and then tighten that nut down. And that's it. The adjustment on the front brakes is the same as in the rear. The only difference is, is you have a little difficulty here with the front eccentric, the top one, because you have to work around the steering arm here. And then on the bottom, as you can see, I've got my angled wrench on the pin down there but it's a little difficult to get in with the caps there that are on the knuckles. Just to add to the video, as the TM says, uh, doing a minor brake adjustment, you would jack the vehicle up on the stands and you'd turn the wheel. I'm not gonna readjust these because I've got them exactly where I want them, but I did wanna show you how to do a minor adjustment. So you would turn the wheel and you would still start with the front top eccentric here and you would turn that until it just started to drag on your drum. And then the TM says you just back that off a little bit and then you go to the rear eccentric and then you go down to the pins on the bottom and do the same thing that we did. You're not using a feeler gauge though. And personally, I don't see how a human hand could judge, you know, eight thousandths and five thousandths, but I guess, you know, that would be a, an adjustment if you had some wear on your brakes or if you had some wear in your drums. And there you have it. It's not that hard, you just have to be patient and sometimes you know, your wrenches will move a little bit and you'll adjust and you know, five thousandths and eight thousandths of an inch is not a lot until you lock that up. It's actually pretty amazing. But once you get that going there, I promise you that Jeep will stop on a dime. If you'd like to follow along, we're doing the 1943 Willis MB. You can do so by subscribing to Team G503 on YouTube. A special thanks to Ron Fitzpatrick and Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe and happy jeeping.